sort of anticipated that Jonas could have another big game, but Patrick and Corey giving you all that stuff off the bench had to be a big surprise? It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't a surprise. I knew they would give us the energy. I didn't know they'd give us the point production. I um, was really happy for Jonas. He got in foul trouble on Saturday. Uh, he kind of gave us what we were we wanted him to give us in that matchup. But again, um, it was a team effort. Everybody had to step in and, and give it to us all the way around. Arden, go ahead. Dwayne, that's uh, two games in a row now that DeMar hasn't really looked like himself. He didn't play him at all in the fourth quarter. When you watch him play right now, what are you seeing? Well, you know, again, I, I don't know if it's tightness or what it is. I know his offense, he didn't get to the line how many times. Uh, he was number two or three in the league and getting to the free throw line. So I don't know if that's frustration or what, but, again, his teammates picked him up. He'll come around. You don't forget that, how to, you know, play offensively to attack the rim. Um, you know, I know the last couple of playoff series, it took him a couple of games to get going. And, uh, again, not playing him in the fourth, I just like the energy and the – the defensive toughness that Norm was bringing uh, on, on, you know, at his position. <clears throat> Devin? Uh, Dwayne, Devin Gray. Uh, right side. Okay, Devin. Uh, Kyle Lowry, everything he did on the court obviously had a great impact. You look at the, the stat line, though, four for 13. How much of what he did is something that you can't monitor or can't put numbers to? That's a great point. I mean, his numbers didn't say how hard he played. I thought he left it out on the floor, diving on the floor, loose balls. Uh, rebounding, uh, got to the free throw line ten, ten, 10 times. He was really playing with force going downhill. And uh, that's what this series is going to be about. I don't know if you can look at a guy's stat line and just tell some of the things he's contributing. And uh, it's definitely with Kyle, 4 for 13 is not a beautiful line, but it doesn't show his grit, his toughness. Him, when he got switched on to Paul George, um, you know, and again, we didn't double team him in certain situations. Some situations we did, because again, you you give up something else when you do that. And we chose to to play him straight up in that situation. And I thought he did. A, he and Norm both uh, did an excellent job. <clears throat> Eric on the left side. You mentioned Norm. Uh, he lost his starting spot and maybe got a few more minutes than he would have mm -hmm. otherwise because of Terrence. How do you think he responded to all of that today? I thought Eric, he, he really he's responded well. I had a long meeting with him on Sunday to tell, talk to him about what we were going to do lineup-wise. He understood it. Again, he's going to be in this league a long time. And somehow, some way, we've got to get um, Damari going, get him integrated into the lineup. And one way to do that is start him, get him starters minutes, you know, to start the game, to get him in the flow of the game along with Paul George. That way he's not coming in and George is already heated. Uh, and then now damari has got to come in to turn off the water. So um, I thought Damari came in and gave us that spark uh, defensively and got it started. Again, this you're not going to stop a guy like Paul George. What do you have, 28 tonight? You're not going to stop him. But uh, you got we just got to make sure we slow him down and uh, not let somebody else get going. Mike on the right Dwayne, side. Dwayne, given the, the game one loss and the pressure at least seemingly mounting, at least maybe from the outside, whether it was with you guys, who knows, but uh, just to finally get one and uh, snap the seven game streak, what does that mean? Mike, you know, again, it is great. This real, the seven game, you know, it's easy to sit there and see that. But again, the, other, the hard part is to see the growth in this program, where we come, where we're going, how we're getting there, um, guys that have been here every day see that, and uh, I think it's really important to keep that in mind. Again, who wants to lose seven playoff games in a row? Nobody does. But again, it's still basketball. We got to still go out and play, not have the pressure of the world on our back. Uh, I think we proved it throughout the course of 82 games that we can play with some good teams, and we just got to go out and play, and um, you know, not read the seven game stuff and all that. Play basketball. Uh, it's still, like I said, it's still five on five, 48 minutes. Michael? I mean, Corey knows that, that history better than anyone. I'm sure he's got the family and everyone around. But uh, he's been outstanding the first two he's games done, of the series. He's done a good job. And again, I still go back to, to Corey. He's been there before. Uh, I thought that second group, along with Norm, DeLon, the young guys, Pat, those guys ended up the season playing really good basketball. Even though it was, they were playing for nothing, I thought they had a good rhythm. Uh, I thought their unity and the chemistry was well. And Corey was leading that charge. <coughs> Excuse me. Corey was leading that charge. And so he's taking this into the playoffs and doing a good job. He's leading the floor, leading the break, uh, leading the, uh, being the floor general. 
defensively, he's having an impact. Um, I just like the way he's playing. He made a, he had a, a bonehead play there right before the half. He went too soon, and he knew it as soon as he did it. You know, we want the last shot, but again, you know, guys are going to make mistakes, and again, you want to minimize those and try not to have those in those situations. Hey, Dwayne, Steve, um, Steve. over here, Dwayne. Oh, okay, yeah. all right, Mike. Um, Paul George got scored again tonight, but it seemed like the difference tonight was that he didn't get much help elsewhere. How important is that you guys made sure of the, his role players and had those big games? Well, they've got some great scores. You know, you're not going to shut down Monte Ellis, George Hill every night. Uh, again, it's uh, sort of, you know, you got to understand what you're looking for, what you're trying to do. Um, you know, he's all those guys are great players, great scores, and the guys on them did a good job. And there's going to come a time where we're going to have to double team him at, at every possession. But uh, we got to pick and choose those spots. <clears throat> Steve, Steve. Oh, Steve. Steve got it. Go ahead. After all you've been through with Jonas over the years, to see him do what he's done in the, in the first two games, mm -hmm. how much does that mean to you and how much does that mean to him? Proud because everybody wanted that kid to be a superstar when he first got here. He wasn't ready. Uh, but again, you know, nobody comes in this league and sets it on fire. Uh, it's very rare when you do. And uh, he's growing, he's developed, he's worked his behind off, uh, Steve, and um, I'm really proud of him. <clears throat> and it, may, it you know, makes me feel good to see him develop like that, play the game, uh, got to keep him from getting in foul trouble. But um, I like his effort, his, his intensity. Um, again, I've always said he's got the greatest hands that we have on the team as far as catching the ball. Um, so I'm really happy for him. Again, it's not, he's not a finished product. He's still going to get better. And uh, the sky's the limit for that young man. Because again, his next phase is shooting, you know, shooting the outside shot, maybe someday shooting a three ball. Uh, he's got a lot of growth in a lot of different areas. <coughs> Rachel. Uh, Dwayne, how did you feel when Damari Carroll had those couple of fast fouls there with three minutes into the game? Were you concerned at that point? Yes, yes. And, you know, just again. He's guarding one of the best offensive players in the league. Um, and you don't want to pick him up those in the, again. But it told us how the officials were going to call the game. And I thought he, we adjusted pretty well <coughs> Excuse me. after we got going. And so um, it was concerning. But I thought the guy, Norm came in and did an excellent job of filling in. Um, Terrence Ross came in until he got hit in the head. Um, and so, but again, those guys off the bench did a good job. And it's just going to, again, Damari's not 100%. You know, he's getting there. I mean, his knee is fine, but as far as game conditioning, his timing, all the other stuff, is, is still, he's still not there. But the only way you're going to do that is to play. And uh, that's why we got to get him integrated into the lineup. <coughs> Any other questions? Holly? Holly in the back. Do you ever have a feel for how a rookie is going to come out in the playoffs, or is it just sort of wait and see? No, you have to wait and see. Because, again, somebody asked this morning, I think Bruce asked, somebody asked, um, you know, what, what, do, what do you anticipate tonight? One thing, I knew we were going to play hard. I thought we would compete, play hard. But uh, you, you never know, especially a rookie, how he's going to respond to the pressure of the game, um, the, big time, the big moment of the game. But, again, I do know Norm is a cool customer. He and DeLon both are, you know, mature rookies just because they've been through it in college. And um, <clears throat> I wasn't really – I won't be surprised if he comes out and just plays his normal basketball. He's missed some shots he normally makes, but it's not because of the moment. So during free throw stoppages, I noticed he would keep coming to the bench and talk to you guys. Was that just him trying to get some – Trying to make sure he's doing the right thing. Again, that's a rookie. and. Uh, you, vets will be out there. They're too proud to ask those questions, but uh, he wanted to make sure he got it right, and I, I, I respect that because he wants to get it right. Um, again, he's again he has a lot to learn too, and it's a big stage to do it on, but uh, he's getting it done. Final question. Let's go to Steven. Uh, Steve. Coach, mm -hmm. uh, all season Patrick's been trying to work on more than just being a three-point shooter, mm -hmm. and in the playoffs he seems to be finding himself getting off the line. Mm -hmm. How much has he improved on his offense? He's really worked on his float game. And, and now the teams are running off the three-point line. Not only he's got a float, his floater going, Steve, he's also got the passing, uh, you know, 
that part of his game down where he's seeing the assist the next play, where a couple of years ago, <coughs> excuse me, the three-point shot was about his only shot, only play he had. But he's really improving that area. Uh, he's getting better at guarding perimeter players, getting switched off on twos and threes and point guards. Uh, so again, he's not a finished product either as far as developing and growing as a player all around his, in his all-around game. Let's go one final question to Ryan. Wayne, uh, oh, did, Ryan. did you have to say anything to DeMar down the stretch, or did he ask anything? DeMar DeRozan? Yeah. No, no, this is not the time of year, Ryan, for that. I think he understands uh, the team. That group was running, gro rolling pretty well. Uh, now is not the time for that. I mean, he, he's a pro. He's one of our top leaders on the team, our all-star. And he would be the first probably to tell you to let that group grow, roll uh, while they were in there. And uh, Norm and that group, Corey and, and Kyle, had it going at that time. So uh, I, didn't, you know, I didn't talk to him.